Metalworking hobbyists like the safe, cheap, and reliable device for heating small metal samples at home and private workshops. And we are here to tackle that. Now, first of all, what exactly is induction heating? Well, induction heating is a process that uses electromagnetic fields to generate heat in conductive materials. Here's how it works. Alternating current flows through a coil generating a magnetic field, and this magnetic field induces currents on the surface of a conductive metal placed inside that coil, and that metal heats up as its internal resistance converts these currents into heat. While induction heating has clear advantages over traditional methods in terms of efficiency and safety, its cost and accessibility remain barriers for small scale or home use. And to address these challenges, we developed two distinct low voltage inverters for induction heating. Each topology offers unique benefits, balancing simplicity, precision, and performance. Let's explore these topologies. The Mazzilli zero voltage switching circuit is a type of self oscillating power inverter circuit. And this technology is usually used for induction heating, flyback transformers, and power supplies. The reason we use this circuit is because this circuit is easy to build and it's more efficient. The Mazzilli zero voltage switching circuit minimizes switching loss because the transistor only switch on or off when the voltage is close to zero. Also, the main symbol of Mazzini circuit is self oscillations. Two MOSFET operate alternately, controlled by the LC circuit, and uh, the oscillations frequency is determined by the LC circuit. For the LC circuit, it's just an inductor and a capacitor parallel with each other, which this one can create a stable sine wave current, which allows the MOSFET to switch under zero voltage switch condition. Each MOSFET have a period with a free winding dial, which provides the path for current when the MOSFET is closed. The development of the original Mazzilli oscillator was initiated to investigate and troubleshoot the limitations of this topology. During testing of the prototype, it became evident that within the lower range of the rated input voltage, specifically between 12 and 15 volts DC, the circuit faced a significant risk of failing to oscillate. This failure would lead to catastrophic damage to the MOSFETs multiple times. Additionally, the work coil and MOSFET heat sinks experienced a significant temperature rise from an initial 68 degrees Fahrenheit to 120 degrees after only about 60 seconds of use. To address these issues, additional capacitance was added to reduce the operational frequency to below 100 kHz to allow for effective monitoring on initial power-up. Also, liquid-cooled MOSFET heat sinks, a coolant system, and 24-volt DC power control systems were designed and implemented. The scaled-up version of the induction heater was built inside an aluminum enclosure with an acrylic backplate for visual inspection and troubleshooting while still maintaining safety. Copper tubing was bent to form the six-turn 1.8 microhenry work coil that was insulated using a silicon-coated fiberglass sleeving and terminated using heat shrink to prevent arcing and exposure to high temperatures. The work coil was connected to isolated bulkhead fittings that route through the enclosure by utilizing laser-cut Teflon washers to prevent a voltage potential from the face and threads of the fittings contacting the enclosure. Inside of the enclosure, 16.47 microfarad capacitors, totaling 7.52 microfarad, were soldered to the form copper tubing, and the assembly was mounted to the bulkhead fittings. Additionally, an acrylic base was fabricated to mount the MOSFET heatsink assemblies. The silicone tubing was used to route the coolant through these to the work coil. Once the front plate of the enclosure was assembled and installed, the remaining components and wiring were installed. This included the installation of the battery cables, foot switch connector, 35 and 5 amp circuit breakers, power control relay, Mazzilli circuit card, coolant pump, overflow tank, and coolant tubing. The induction heater was tested at 24 volts and 20 amps and oscillated at 46 kilohertz. 
Unfortunately, after a short period, the system failed and resulted in a broken silicon carbide MOSFET. This failure was confirmed by checking the source to drain resistance through the MOSFET while being driven to saturation. The failure of the MOSFETs is expected to be the result of the Mazzilli circuit's inability to fully switch off the MOSFETs, as the recommended range is 10 volts lower than the circuit's capabilities. Therefore, these were replaced with two sets of two parallel silicon MOSFETs. After the repair, the system was able to effectively and continuously heat items at 24 volts and 28 amps. The switching did not happen at 0 volts, but still very close at about 2. Ultimately, the full-scale version was able to heat metal to a red-hot color over 500 degrees Fahrenheit after only one minute of heating. This was accomplished while keeping the MOSFETs in work oil only 10 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the ambient temperature after 10 minutes of operation at about 50% duty cycle. The half-bridge topology creates an AC waveform across the coil by switching two FETs that are connected to one side of the coil. The top FET's drain is connected to a DC supply while the bottom FET source and the other side of the coil are grounded. The high side of the coil, top FET source, bottom FET drain, and the anode of the bootstrap capacitor are all connected to the same node. The bootstrap capacitor is what makes switching the top gate possible in our circuit. For proper operation, both FETs should be on for the same amount of time but for different portions of the period. When the top bed is on, current flows from the DC source to ground, building up energy in the coil. Then the top bed is switched off and the bottom bed is switched on. This creates a current that flows in the opposite direction of the coil, draining the stored energy, creating an alternating current. Switching the bottom FET is relatively easy using the proper components, but pushing the top FET's voltage above its combined threshold and source voltage can be tricky. Gate drivers are a great cost-effective solution for low-power devices, but gate drivers for high-power devices were unfortunately too expensive for the project. Thus, the group worked on creating a rudimentary bootstrap circuit to boost the top gate voltage. The bootstrap circuit used a diode to feed the DC supply to a voltage divider. The voltage divider then created a voltage that would bias our bootstrap capacitor when the bottom FET was enabled. When the bottom FET is switched off, the capacitor's stored voltage can be used to boost the voltage at the top FET's gate. Next, a bootstrap FET would toggle the top FET's gate between ground, when toggled on, and the voltage of the capacitor plus the high side of the coil, when toggled off. The bootstrap circuit also incorporates another FET to turn off the voltage divider when it's not being used to charge the capacitor. Overall, this topology uses four FETs, three to control the alternating current and one to minimize losses. An important part of creating the low voltage switching was to control when the FETs turned on and off. We did this using an Arduino Uno as our controller. To control the switching speed and ensure the FETs were never on at the same time, we wrote the code to turn on one FET while the other was low, and then give a very short dead time in which both FETs were off, which prevents current shoot through, and then the process would repeat before the other FET. This alternating pattern of switching FETs is how you go from DC to AC, and is what creates the high frequency AC current used for induction heating. Our senior design project successfully demonstrated two induction heating designs, a Mazzilli oscillator and a half bridge circuit. While both achieved low voltage switching, only the Mazzilli oscillator consistently heated metals at 24 volts and 28 amps. The half bridge design operated at 24 volts, but achieved low voltage switching only in unloaded conditions. Looking forward, future work will focus on advancing low voltage switching to zero voltage switching for greater efficiency, with the ultimate goal of creating an affordable induction heater for domestic use.